My name's Dan Bleavy. I'm a teacher at Wiltshire Secondary College in Adelaide, uh, which is a boarding school for Indigenous students from Central Australia. And in a few weeks, we're taking a group of those secondary students to Hanoi in Vietnam for a volunteer experience. This is Vietnam all the way up in the river. Wasn't that a guest one? My name is Yindi and I was born in Mount Isa and I live in Nimali. My name is Mitchell James and I'm from Ingola, which is northeast of Alaskan. Hello, my name is Adrian. I'm from Indalkana and this is Morris. My name is Morris. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> now we just like grew up at Esrock, Murujuro, and then when we got older, we just needed to go to high schools. So we went to Alice Spring. And then after that, we just found out this place, Wilcher, and we came to this side. We grew up together and came to live together. Here we are, with year 11. And came for year 12 next year. Mm -hmm. Get up and done with it. <laughs> Two years ago, um, the students went to China and just the experience of being in a really different climate and with very different people where English is not the total language, where the money is all different, where there are ever so many more people, is just mind-blowing and the students have just all the ones who've been away have been so excited about it. Now the extra dimension of course this time is that it's Vietnam with volunteering and I really think that will go really really well. It could be argued that for many of our students they represent the really poorest group of young people in Australia <laughs> and um, and have often been perhaps at the other end of the scale but I know from working with them over the years that that they are very empathetic about other people and people in need. Mm -hmm. So it'll be exciting, it'll be um, a very different place. None of them have been far afield before. So it'll be all that. And then there'll be the extra dimension of, of giving something and, and perhaps really recognising how much they actually do have to give, which I think will be really exciting for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's three of us going on the trip. Uh, there's me and then two um, staff from the boarding house, Jade and Sami. And we're taking about eight kids. My name's Asami um, Bakabayashi. Um, I'm a recreational coordinator at Wiltshire Essential Program. So my name's Jade and I'm a youth worker at Wiltshire and I've been there for about just over two years now. Um, I think they're going to have a huge culture shock because yeah. those kids, I mean, never been overseas to start with, but they don't, they're really secluded sort of within their own culture. So they don't put themselves outside, out, outside their comfort zone sort of. So I think they're going to struggle a bit first, but they're going to be alright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so looking forward to it, so looking forward to it. When, when Asami first rung me and said, do you want to do this? Because this is everything that I believe in. I, I'm so keen to get these kids out in the world and feeling empowered and, you know, learning about the wider world out there. And it's up to them whether they choose to, to you know, like it or, or not like it. You know, some, they'll reinforce how amazing their community is. Some will be more wanting to go out and explore. But I just think it's so great to have our students doing something so powerful and positive. Well, it's a brilliant group of kids. Um, 
I think they'll be they'll be okay, but to be honest, I think they've got no idea what they're in for. Selfless, you know, and there's a lot of people, and everything there's cheap. <laughs> More traffic's clean the video, that's um, the people just keep walking. Mm. Too much. You stop being the dead meat. Yeah. It's probably a bit scary, I reckon. Go to it overseas. Learn new things. The only thing I'm nervous about is like, I've seen like snakes on a plane and like all those scary movies and stuff and so I feel like we're gonna like crash on a plane or anything but other than that everything's gonna be like great. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard for me to speak English for them but when, if I thought that I just use sign language to show my understanding for them. Probably a good experience for us, Aboriginal kids going overseas, mm -hmm. getting to see different scenery, different people, different land, and yeah, getting on the flight, probably the longest flight of my life. I'm scared. Going overseas, yeah, pretty nervous about it as well.
just got to Phuktwe daycare centre and the boys have had to come up with some ideas just to get people like moving first thing in the morning and get them a bit of exercise so um, they've come and done some hopscotch <laughs> and there's lots of jumping around so it's all good. But yeah, I think um, it's good they come up with the idea themselves and it seems to be going well. People are having fun anyway. <laughs> Hey, I'm Nam. I'm, I'm working for SA Vietnam, and today we are in the disabled center. Um, here we have 25, 25 kids that have a problem about mentally, and um, a lot of volunteers come here to helping the center. They playing with the kids. They teach the kids Vietnamese, English, or mathematics, and. Um, they feel very happy to helping the kids here because in SJ Vietnam we want we want to we want to say like they are disabled, they have problem life, but they are not alone in the world. So we're very happy to see all you guys to come here to helping to playing with the kids. Day one storm And it was beautiful A day one storm from the ground Then the night she fell And the air was beautiful The night she fell Okay, today we work in the garden, and in the morning, everybody will make the light for uh, planting tomato, and in the afternoon we win planting. Yeah. Go play the game that you learned from morning. Here you can see a lot of vegetables, they planting, they taking care and after they give for the kids, yeah. it's for about lunch or dinner. All the for them to eat, yeah. not selling here. See she flies, she is everywhere. See she flies. After lunch um, we came down back, came back here. Um, Sit around for a bit, hang around. Then we asked if we can play soccer. Then we came out, came out here and played soccer on the road, which is crazy. Thank you. 
Chihuahua. Chihuahua day. We are looking out for Um. How's it been? It's been intense. <laughs> Bodhi Pagoda uh, orphanage and it sounds like we're just looking after kids today so as you can see there's a lot of kids here I think this is probably six months to one year old or something and um, when we came in it was basically a room full of babies and just Morris and me so we picked up as many as we could carry and uh, now there's nappy changes, which is very much in need for this one. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's just look after these kids really. Because there's a lot of kids and not many people to help. Ladies will come to you with a baby and say, help, help, help me. <laughs> yeah, and then so we'd hold them and put them to sleep and once the babies were asleep, we'd give them back. Yeah. back. Yeah. They'd go like them play with them. Bed. Yeah. It was really dirty, wasn't it? The water turned black, like a pure black. Mm. And you'll have to wash it like five times. Ten times. Ten? It wasn't ten times, probably five, six times. And he used, your, he used his muscle to squeeze the water out because they don't have a washing machine here. You have to hand wash everything from mm. kids' clothing to beds, linens, towels. It's the beginning of day three, and for me at least, a lot of my anxiety has gone about how the kids are going to respond at the places and, you know, how well they're going to do. I was at um, the daycare centre for disabled children, and I had the boys with me, um, or four of the boys with me, and, you know, they just... They got amongst it and they were really open with the kids and the kids were really open with them. And, um, and the other really good thing about yesterday is how well they're getting on with the volunteers, um, the local volunteers. It's just, you know, they're so friendly and they're so open to the kids and the kids are really warming up to them really, really quickly. Um, kids who usually take a while to open up to people are sort of, yeah, they're opening up really fast, which is exciting. In general, people are not, um, like, hesitant or, like, to approach them or anything. They just jump in and, like, grab them and talk to them. And, you know, I think that breaks that barrier straight away rather than them, like, being a little bit cautious around them. Yeah. That's what you want to see all the time. Them mm. feeling comfortable with who they are and feeling like they belong and they're an equal and they have, you know, 
they have authority to speak and they're doing that now. Mm. That's so good. with SJ Vietnam, working with 13 Australian, yeah. This is the first time I met the Aborigine, yeah. I'm really excited. The first time I meet them, is, uh, I thought I thought that, um, and they are so, so shy, but not, not yesterday and today, and they are so friendly. <laughs> And the boy uh, with uh, talk to me, and the girl uh, Lina, very very best friend, and she is my best friend, and I'm so happy to see them. Yeah, yep. And I have to be honest, like at first when I met them at the airport, I was like, oh, it's not what I imagined. But like my guy, so I just like normal Vietnamese. When you see black guy, like, but after that, the second day and third, and this day working with you guys, I realized it can bring me a lot of not just experience to working volunteering work, but it is like the way to think and perspective. Yeah. Uh, yesterday I saw Galen holding a baby, and because he's so tall and the baby's so small, it's kind of cute. And looking at him really gentle to the baby is like. Yeah, it's really nice. I don't think they shy anymore. It, they, inside them, they're hilarious, funny, and they got talented. A dance skill, like, whoa, but they didn't show up. And after working with this kid, I realized that my perspective before this came is good at all. Just like other Vietnamese. You know, thanks to this trip, and thanks to the time I'm working with you guys, the kid, like, I'm cheap. Um, well, it's Monday morning now. We've got two days left. Um, Today is like the final visits to our workplaces and then tomorrow is um, just a little sort of day trip day and night to Harlem Bay before we fly home. Um, and yesterday after like the, we had that sort of really flat day on Saturday when it was wet and um, the kids were kind of past it and not a lot of work got done but then yesterday um, being the last day of the volunteering, um, they sort of got their second wind and they worked really hard. kids and young people from the disability centre weren't there so it was just kind of um, hard work. It was sanding tables and chairs and painting and um, without that kind of interaction which the kids have really been enjoying. Um, but there were no complaints about it. They all got down and, and they just did it. Um, I think kind of fueled by that idea that it was the last day and um, this was their last chance to kind of do something for those people because they really, I think they really get that that's what they're here for and that it's a good thing to do.
you gonna tell your family when you say that you can't be alone? Everything. Tell them I had fun. <laughs> Probably get a bit more confidence. Talk in front of arms and these people. The trip was awesome. <laughs> I'm disabled kids and the am an orphan. It was very emotional. Yeah.